in today's video, we're about to cover some of the eight most difficult computer science courses. So stand by, this video is about to start. This is the Savage Scientist Ed right here, and I'm writing code in a police car. And today, we're about to cover the eight most difficult computer science courses and this is going to be from the standard curriculum like the one I took at the University of Swampland, Primeburg, Swampland. Yes, and yeah, I mean, when I say, you know, really got my degrees from Louisiana State University, Mississippi State University, but fuck that, it came from Swampland. So, and if you don't know what Swampland is, that is what I collectively call all my subscribers. So, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button right now. It's sitting right there, ready to be fucked with. So, in this video, we're going to discuss the eight most difficult computer science courses and I know I just repeated myself like another YouTuber I know so big salute so let's get into the video here and I will only discuss computer science courses so with that being said so now it's time for us to start with number eight and that is the second programming course normally it's in the 2000s and this course will teach you about sorting and advanced basic algorithms. So you might do a little bit of programming in uh, Java, C++, and um, well, yeah, Java, C++, Python, and some other high-level language. Really? So this course is advanced, or this course even appeared on this list because if you're not coming from a computer science background and you, you just learn how to code, then this shit is this this is gonna be a difficult course. So you have to take your time, work hard to pass this. So let's go to number seven, and that is the advanced operating system course. This course will teach you about how operating systems are designed, how they work. You're gonna learn about the, the classical operating system problems like um, race conditions. And that's going to be real important for if you go into cybersecurity because most hackers attack the computer through the operating system. So you're going to learn about how to handle, like I said, the race conditions. It's going to talk about threads. You might do a little bit of thread programming. You might write processes. Learn about processes. You're going to learn about memory management. You're going to learn a lot of different things in this course. And it's pretty fun, actually. So, number six, computer architecture. Sometimes this course might be taught as something like EE, electrical engineering. So, this, is, this was taught to me as a computer science course. So, that's why it's on this list and it's computer architecture. You're going to learn about um, the different gates like AND gates, OR gates. And you're going to be putting them together to form flip-flops and all type of uh, electrical circuits. And you're going to get into the dreaded assembly language where you get to play with the great registers in the processor. So you're going to see stuff like move instructions, jump conditions. You're going to see a lot of different assembly language calls like um, interrupts. But... We're going to talk about that a little later. So computer architecture, you are basically, right, you basically programming circuits. Very, very basic circuits. And in my version of computer architecture, we actually created an Al uh, ALU, algorithmic, what did that stand for? Lo algorithmic logic unit. We did adders, we created, we learned about why the clock is important. So computer architecture, very fun class. And it's difficult. And data structures. You know I'm going to talk about this one. So if you haven't seen my series on data structures, then you will learn, you're going to learn data types, you're going to learn stacks, trees, queues, all those classical data structures to form larger programs like Microsoft Word and all that stuff. So this is a course that's going to teach you about data types, Basic linear data structures like linked lists, arrays, and you're going to get into trees, which are 
linked based data structures that deal with memory. So this is what our tree is going to look like. And you're going to have difficult problems where you might have to insert values into these trees using the key value. So before getting into all the details of this, check out my data structures. And this is a, a meaningless plug so you can watch my data structures video. It's going to be in the link up there somewhere. So data structures. It's very good stuff. And if you want to be, if you want one of those good um, $100,000 a year jobs, then you have to know data structures. No way around it. So number four, discrete mathematics. So this is another course. And you know, notice 999 is a 666 upside down. I don't know why I did that. This is a math class where it's all about the proofs. You might have to prove induction like I had to you're going to write proofs on why stuff actually work. You might get into truth tables. This is the logic for computer science. And it is a very difficult class because sometimes you may be coming from algebra because most of the time this class will require you to know algebra. You, you, you don't have to go into any advanced proven calculus theorems and all that stuff. But this class will teach you the proof. So when you do take calculus and all those other classes, you'll be able to read those proofs in the math book and do a lot better. I would say this is probably one of the most important math classes, even for a math major. So in this course, you're going to learn set theory. You're going to learn classical logical. You're going to learn De Morgan's laws. You're going to learn all types of stuff. So you're going to get your hands. You, so you're going to you're going to have to study a little bit in this course. And yes, they are starting to get hard. This is a difficult one. Compiler construction. This course appears as a, another difficult one, 46, 66. And you notice the higher the number, the more difficult the course. And some universities use three numbers, so this would be 46, uh, 466. And at, at my school, it's 46, 66. This course deals with topics from another class that I will discuss here. So the reason why this is number three, because it already assumed through the prereqs that you had um, theory of computation, data structures, and discrete mathematics. This is a very difficult course because it's gonna, because it's gonna test all those areas and it's not as difficult as those courses alone if you're if it's your first time seeing it. So this is three. It's easy after you took the prereqs, but it's gonna give you some hard time because you're gonna have to write a compiler, you're gonna have to create a grammar for that compiler, and you're gonna have to deal with creating a language for that for the compiler to work. Difficult. I'm glad I didn't have to take it. This one. Theory of Computation in Formal Languages. This is one of the courses that I was saying would be required for the previous course. This course deals with the impossible, uh, dealing with can the computer actually process this. So you're gonna we're going to talk about Turing machines and you're going to be creating grammars, languages. You're going to be finding out how to, how to, develop proofs. So you're going to be going back to your discrete mathematics in this course because you're going to be writing proofs. You're going to be proving compu compu computability. You're going to be proving how these algorithms actually work. This course, instead of writing code, you're going to be writing automata. So you're going to be doing stuff like this and you're going to start with an input, and this will be an accept state on the automata. So it might be, let's say this takes a language, and that's why it's called formal languages right here. So you're going to learn how to formally create a language so that this automata, A, will accept using input 1, 1, 0. So if this accepts a 1, this one accepts a 1, this one accepts a 0, then that means it works. And actually, that should be like that. That's our accept state. So you can see I'm a little rusty at this, but 
That's all this is in, in theory of computation, formal languages, automata, very important stuff. You're gonna learn how to, you're gonna use, you're gonna learn about finite machines, machines, Turing machines, grammars, languages, all that other good stuff. And this stuff, you could impress the shit out of people on the job interview by using some of the concepts you might learn in this course. So, so now, for the most difficult course on this list, you see it, Introduction to Algorithms. It is scary and hard, but I don't think it's really that scary and hard, but <laughs> it's still number one on this list. I mean, this course, you will be analyzing algorithms time complexity, space complexity, and you will be, instead of writing proofs, you will be proving them algorithmically. You're gonna look for the best solution to the problems. You're gonna be learning about greedy algorithms and all type of different algorithms. So in our discrete math, I mean, in, in data structures, you actually learn how to create an algorithm to rotate a tree when adding a value V to this tree to make it so it's unbalanced because once you add something to it, now this tree is messed up. So you're gonna learn how to redraw that tree in code so it's balanced like that. You're gonna learn all types of algorithms in this course. And that might be a subject for an advanced algorithm class, but either way it goes, this is probably the most difficult computer science course. You're gonna learn about, you're gonna learn the right algorithm for the problem, so you're gonna have to learn how to solve problems, identify unique characteristics of computer science problems, and it won't, it won't blow your head off that much as long as you study, but this is a difficult one, and I might start doing videos on this stuff. And here are some courses that people might say, well, I took some of this. These are harder courses. I mean, these are some courses that vary. So these courses vary in complexity, but I put them on this list because I haven't, I haven't, I, I mean, I mean, you know, coming from a person with WWF on this transcript. He ain't lying. I mean, these courses are some, I took some of them and well, I, I took almost all of them except this one numerical analyst and this this course could actually be harder than algorithms um i haven't researched too much on this course i didn't take it so databases is a difficult course because you look at databases and you look at a formal uh, a formal way of writing a database you're going to learn this stupid database language called uh you're going to learn the the database language, well, that is the select and that is the project. So you're going to learn that language. So you're going to learn how to create databases in a mat, almost like a mathematical slash proof type language. So this course is difficult. So another one, introduction to computer science. Why is a probably the easiest course that I've ever seen is on this list, right? That is, if you haven't used the computer, if you don't know what a computer is, then this is going to be difficult for you. If you're coming from the life sciences, from the other side of campus, intro to computers might be a little hard. Or intro to computer science, because in intro to computer science, you're going to touch on a little bit of all this stuff. So... Interactive graphics. I don't know how difficult this course is because it's another one I didn't take, but I put it on here because some people might say it's difficult because some, a lot of times it requires linear algebra and linear algebra is deals with rotating matrix, ro deal with set of equations. That's what a matrix is, basically a set of equations. And, and to get a point to transform in 3D, you will have a matrix with three points and you might have to rotate it by some matrix M. So that's all this is. This is this could become a difficult course if you I mean I mean hey 
interactive graphics. And not only are we creating graphics, we're making these graphics interactive. So a lot of game designers, real-time systems, bridge designers, any people who are using CAD-like software or have to design software that deals with engineering might have to take this course. Reverse engineering. This course is difficult because it deals with assembly language and that's where you're going to actually take a program and reverse the code or basically put it in a, a, dis a disassembler like Ida Pro, Ghidra, stuff like that and we're going to look at the code in its rawest form so that means it's going to be an assembly language and we're going to have to trace back our functions. It could be difficult. So that means you have to understand how programs look in the memory. So normally this course will require you an understanding of, of assembly language, computer architecture, operating system, data structures, discrete math. That's why it's on this list. Website design. This course will be difficult because sometimes people take this course that outside computer science, they just look at graphics and putting pretty stuff on the website, but then they start, start touching HTML and they might start getting into JavaScript, so they're going to have to learn how to code. So that means they're going to have to take a course that's both difficult than this, so that'll be software engineering titles, and they're going to have to learn about this other one, user interface. So website design covers a lot of computer science, and that's why it's on here. It is programming still. So Let's go down here to user interface design. This is a difficult course because sometimes, well, it's not, it's not difficult at all, but this course deals with, with creating, creating user interfaces where you might have to write code for the operating system. So that means you're going to play with the operating system API. And sometimes that they might have a thousand functions or a thousand ways to do the same thing. So really this course is showing you how to do research to get those graphics on the screen. And Windows, it take a hunt over, uh, I think like six to seven lines of code just to get a window on the screen. So this course, you might be using Windows or Linux, and that is using the Win32 API. You could do it a lot easier in PowerShell, but when I learned Windows programming, and if you want to get into serious serious um, Windows development. If you're not using um, .NET, then you're probably going to be using Win32 or some variant of it. That is something Microsoft is going away from. So that is, now I'm going into another tangent. So user interface design, a very fun class. And a lot of times this class will have students evaluate user interfaces to find out how, how they how effective they are and hackers like me could actually write code to make it so you think the user interface is of a real program you click on it and now you just launch some viruses on your computer so so that that's where and I don't have any com any courses on uh cybersecurity but we don't we don't we don't have to worry about that that's what this channel is for and the last one is software engineering that is a combination of that that is kind of web design but sometimes this is this is web design for computer scientists and in this course it's going to focus more on 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 managing teams of, of programmers where you will be given a a project and you're going to you're going to so you might have to design a website like this, but it's this going to be graded on the management of that project. So it's a little bit of project management, a little bit of, of um, requirements gathering, figuring out the scope of the project. This is this is this is a pretty much an easy course. And this is the end of this video. If you like what you saw here, this is Savage Scientist Ed, and I have more coming. And let me know if you want to see a tier ranking list. So till I make my next video. Peace out.